questions that expose a narcissist's true values and mindset. Do you have an uneasy feeling that someone close to you is highly self-absorbed or manipulative? Narcissists are masters of disguise when you first interact with them. But targeted questions reveal what truly shapes them underneath their charming facade. In this in-depth video, we'll explore over 20 powerful questions that unmask a narcissist's inner mindset, motivations and values. You'll learn insider techniques used by psychologists to uncover their worldview, role models, integrity, relationship patterns and more. These hard-hitting questions help you peer behind the narcissist's curtain quickly. You can then proceed cautiously and avoid falling prey to their exploitation. We will discuss eight most illuminating questions to reveal a narcissist's mindset and motivations. Who do they praise and look up to as role models? Why? Can they admit to substantive changes in their opinions over time? What is the best and worst advice they've received? How did it impact them? How has luck or privilege contributed to their status? Do they openly identify as narcissistic? How do they respond to ethical dilemmas? How do they define success and achievement? What was their childhood home environment like? Let's discuss each in depth with their answers. One, ask who their biggest role models. Our, our first technique is to ask who they most admire and look up to, both famous figures and people in their own lives. This offers a penetrating window into their values and what motivations shape them. For example, ask directly, who are your biggest role models and inspirations growing up and now? Listen carefully as they name their choices. Do they idolize anti-heroes, villains and manipulators, or principled heroes who overcome adversity with integrity? If their role models are Walter White, Patrick Bateman or similar figures, that likely reveals attraction toward power acquired by any means necessary. Their inspiration reflect a win-at-all-costs mentality. In contrast, if they praise Atticus Finch, Nelson Mandela or Oprah, it signals humility. They likely aspire to act with conscience versus grasping for glory and dominance. Of course, one or two questionable role models don't guarantee full-blown narcissism. But combined with other red flags, it's an illuminating data point. It spotlights the type of person they hunger to be like deep down. Pay close attention as well to how they describe their role models. Is it solely in terms of achievement and status? For example, Elon Musk is my hero. He's the richest man alive and everyone wants to be him. Or do they describe admirable qualities beyond money and power? For example, my mentor John donates half his income to charity. His generosity motivates me to give back more. Listen for what traits they praise most. This reveals what they fundamentally consider success and worthy of aspiring to. 2. Ask for examples of changing major opinions. You can also ask, can you share examples of significant opinions or beliefs you held strongly in the past but have now changed? Why and how? Being open to evolving our perspectives over time shows maturity and wisdom. It reflects intellectual humility, but a narcissist rarely changes their core opinions or beliefs. That would require they admit they were wrong or limited in their thinking about something in the past. Their fragile egos can't tolerate being fallible. At most, they may cite switching superficial preferences that don't challenge their identity, like no longer hating foods they disliked as a child but they likely can't pinpoint meaningful shifts in their worldviews. For example, on societal values, the meaning of success, relationship dynamics, or their own flaws and misconceptions. An inability to self-reflect shows rigid and immovable thinking. As the saying goes, a wise person changes their mind, a fool never does. In contrast, complex thinkers know deep personal growth often emerges from evolving our perspectives over time. If they do claim an impactful change of heart, ask follow-up questions to assess authenticity. For example, you, you said your view on relationships evolved. How so? Them, I used to think I could never trust partners after being cheated on, but my therapist helped me realise I kept choosing dishonest people and needed to work on my self-worth. I'm more open to love now. This level of nuanced self-awareness indicates real growth. Whereas a narcissist's uh, changes will tend to be shallow rationalizations. Three, ask about the best and worst advice that shaped them similarly. You can ask, what is the single best and worst piece of advice you've gotten that really shaped who you are now? How exactly did it impact you? 
This reveals their ability to absorb others' wisdom rather than believing they innately know it all. It also shows if they can discern helpful versus harmful guidance. A narcissist perceives themselves as superior, so they dismiss wholesome counsel from others. They believe solely their intuition. At best, they may cite bad advice they claim to have ignored. But they won't integrate truly constructive insights that guided their growth. Whereas a mentally balanced person can name best advice that served them well at pivotal moments. For example, advice about an ethical framework, a relationship dynamic, or a career tip that profoundly shaped their path. Being positively influenced by others with more life experience demonstrates humility. But narcissists miss that growth opportunity by clinging to the assumption they should only consult themselves. Pay attention also to how any best advice improved them. Is it discussed in terms of selfish outcomes like more money or status? For example, my mentor told me to demand higher pay, so I make twice as much now. Or in terms of deep personal growth. For example, my therapist helped me finally process childhood trauma and have more compassion for myself. Self-focused motives versus expansion reveal what someone considers true betterment. Four, ask how luck or privilege have helped them. Here's another illuminating question. Tell me about a specific time when good luck, perfect timing or personal connection significantly helped you progress. How do you feel about that? This probes their ability to acknowledge outside factors versus viewing themselves as solely self-made. A narcissist attributes all their success solely to their own doing, their purported intelligence, talent, work ethic or charm. Nothing was simply handed to them in their eyes. They claim total credit for accomplishments and assets. But they'll quickly cite external forces like bad luck when things don't go their way. For instance, I'd be leading my own company by now if the recession hadn't ruined the industry. My business partnership fell apart because she made reckless decisions, not because of anything I did. In contrast, a self-aware person understands success and failure always involve grey areas. They appreciate the privilege of fortunate opportunities. For example, I got my first big corporate job because my uncle referred me. Right place, right time, really aligned perfectly. Hitting it big in real estate had a lot to do with inheriting money from grandpa for my first down payment. An inability to express gratitude reveals a massive sense of entitlement. It reflects the hubris that luck or help from others had nothing to do with their status. Their distorted thinking ignores truths about how life unfolds. Listen for signs of reasonable humility versus complete grandiose denial. And note whether they speak with resentment or gratitude about receiving any advantage. 5. Ask directly if they consider themselves narcissistic. Strangely enough, you can also ask point blank. Do you consider yourself a narcissist or highly self-absorbed? Studies show that people high in narcissism will actually say yes. They happily cop to it with no shame. It's part of their exaggerated self-assurance to openly admit they are self-focused, grandiose and superior. They proudly self-identify that way. So don't beat around the bush if you suspect you're dealing with a narcissist. Ask clearly and observe closely for revealing reactions. A simple absolutely or yes confirms this person recognises their extreme self-absorption. They'll perceive your question as a compliment, not an accusation. That forthright admission reveals textbook narcissistic tendencies. Of course, most people will deny it due to social stigma, but listen closely to any defense or rationalization they offer, for instance. Of course, I'm not narcissistic. Sure, I focus on my needs sometimes, but I do care about people. Everyone who loves themselves gets called narcissistic these days. I just have high self-esteem. Do they respond with thoughtful reflection or knee-jerk justification revealing a fragile ego? Also note any anger or attempts to shame you for asking. If they try to make you feel guilty for questioning their inflated image, that's very telling narcissistic behavior. Six, discuss hypothetical ethics scenarios. Pose tricky ethical scenarios to uncover their true values. For example, if you discovered your employer was deliberately hiding safety violations that put customers at risk, what would you do? Why? Or, if you got away with cheating on your taxes once, would you feel comfortable doing it again? Where would you draw the ethical line? This reveals whether they reason based on objective principles versus what benefits themselves. A narcissist will rationalize or outright defend unethical behavior in hypotheticals, especially if they can avoid accountability. For instance, 
I'd keep quiet about violations as long as I was profiting, and they agreed to promote me. I'd absolutely cheat again if I needed the money the government wastes tax dollars anyway. Or they may simply state the ethical action, but in an abstract, intellectualized manner. For example, whistleblowing is theoretically admirable, but it requires considering complex circumstances. In contrast, a principled person will display their moral compass. For example, to, I would report the violations immediately. Protecting innocent customers is more important than any job. I believe cheating is wrong in any circumstance. I'd pay back taxes with interest. They state their values clearly, rather than making excuses. And they speak with conviction, rooted in real mindfulness versus textbook platitudes. Listen for bold rationalizing versus nuanced critical thinking. Ethics questions draw out who someone is at their core when no one is watching. Seven, ask how they define success and achievement. Their personal definition of success also offers strong clues. You can ask directly, how do you define success and achievement for yourself? What does that look like to you? Pay close attention to the ideals and values they emphasize. A narcissist will focus entirely on things like status in the eyes of others, wealth, power and material assets, beating competitors, being recognized and admired, whereas a principled person may mention aspects like ongoing learning and growth, meaningful connections and love, making a positive difference, inner fulfillment. Of course, they may mention external accomplishments, but alongside more emotional dimensions. Listen closely for what type of victory their definition of success centers on. That cuts to the heart of their motivations. Eight, ask about their childhood and upbringing. Lastly, when appropriate, gently ask about their childhood and upbringing. Developmental trauma and emotional dynamics often predispose people to pathological narcissism later in life. For example, probe if they grew up experiencing things like home performance pressure that is forced into early achievement, talent development, parental manipulation that is love given conditionally, emotional neglect that is caretaking focused on physical needs versus bonding, golden child black sheep dynamics that is labeled as the successful one among siblings, perfectionism that is held to impossibly high standards by parents or teachers. These emotional patterns in early childhood often breed shame and inadequacy in the child. Narcissism then develops as an exaggerated defense mechanism to cope with and bury those wounds. Of course, not all narcissists endured such childhood environments, but many did, so it offers potential clues about where their extreme self-focus stems from. Listen for early emotional dynamics that may have bred insecurity and made them highly dependent on external validation. Those seeds often bloom into full narcissism. Of course, these questions require observation over an extended period. Not just one conversation, form an understanding of their characteristic narratives. How they explain their past, interpret events and discuss relationships. The more data points you gather, the clearer the pattern emerges. Learn to listen like a psychologist. Spot self-focused versus others-focused language and notice grandiose versus balanced self-perception. Probe their motives rather than just their charm. Mastering these techniques allows you to identify narcissists' values and agendas faster. You can then make informed choices about engaging with them in relationships or cutting ties. I hope these tools empower you to penetrate narcissists' facades more easily. Please like and subscribe for more content on safely engaging with narcissists. Share any insights you have in the comments below.